Welcome to Larry Dress YouTube channel. Today we'll be learning how to make this kiddies dress. So it's a double flare dress. The half length is the half length has like a crisscross at the back, and the flare is flare also has crimson line just to give it some kind of wavy effect. Okay, so let's get right into the tutorial. Okay, so this is the back of the dress, the crisscross back embellished with feet. Okay, library trust YouTube channel. Today we'll be learning how to make a double flare kiddie dress. So for this tutorial, we'll be working with nine inches waistline and what nine inches half length sorry and the waistline we're working with is 22 inches so 22 divided by four is going to give me five and half okay but before then this is an off shoulder dress i just had to take the nine inches so that we understand better so for the off shoulder i'll be taking two inches off you can try to take two or three or three and a half or four depending on how low you want the off shoulder to be so for this i'm just taking two inches off and then I'm going to roll that into a straight line. The armhole I'm working with for this project is four inches. So I'll measure four inches like this and then connect my armhole like this. Okay, so that is my armhole. So it means these two inches will be going off because this is an off shoulder. So now if you check very well, we'll notice that the dress has a sweetheart neckline. So for the sweetheart neckline, I'll be going down by one inch. Okay. And then on a chest line, a chest line is three and a half. That's where the sh uh, sleeve will start. So it's seven inches on foot. And it's seven inches. So on foot is going to give me three and a half inches. Sorry. So when I have that, I'm just going to connect my three and a half inches to my sweetheart neckline using a curved ruler. So I'll take this curved ruler like this, get a very nice sweetheart curve, and then I'm going to connect it. Remember I said the waist we're working with is 22 inches. So divided by five, divided by four, I'm going to have five and a half inches so this is five and a half like this the waist and the chest line is the same thing so i'm just going to reply repeat it on this side also then i'm going to connect that this there's no need for it that here because it is a a kiddies dress their chest is relatively flat so i'm adding one and a half inches allowance to it so this is my allowance this is not going to be having an armhole because it's like a tube dress. So I'm just going to connect my cuff. I'm going to connect my cuff like this. I'm just looking for a good... Okay. So I, I, I don't want it to enter my, my seam allowance. So I'm just trying to get a nice cuff. So this is going to give me a better curve. So I'm just using this to give it a smooth curve to join my arm or like this remember i don't want this cuff to enter my seam allowance because this is just for sewing it's not part of the main bodies so now our front body is ready make sure your cuff is as smooth as possible so you just look for a way to make just everything blend together so that it won't be bumpy at any point okay you can see this is looking better now so now we move to our back bodies for the back bodies it's a bit lower than the the front so i'm just going to go half by four inches and i'll, I'll be starting on my ham o line so it means i'm taking all of this half the waist remain the same five and a half inches the chest line also this is the chest line this is the waist the chest line and the waist remain the same five and a half inches and then i'm going to connect that okay remember this does not have an ham o i'll add my allowances one and a half inches allowance to it like this okay so here i'm going to go down depending on how low you want to remember we already went down by four inches so i can start to go down by five or five and a half or six depending on what you want to use i'm just going to go with five inches because i don't want it too too low and then from here i'm going to connect it to my five inches 
okay so that's about it at the back if you want a zipper at the back you just need to add the zipper allowance here but for this dress i'm going to be adding a loop at the back so i'm not going to be using any zipper allowance instead i'm going to take away from it depending on how open you want the back to be on the waistline i'll be taking one inch and remember this is on full by the time i open it out it's going to give me two inches and on the upper part here i'm going to be taking one and half or two inches or whatever depending on what you want then I'm going to take my straight ruler and connect this together so I'm going to cut all this off and then I'm going to replace it with loops so that I can pass it and crisscross around so that I can tighten the back of my dress so this is the front panel and this is the back and this is about what you are going to do so now we're just going to cut this out Oops. Uh, of course this has now this is the front block and this is the black block if you open this up you will see the sweetheart neckline like this and this is the same allowance here so i'm just going to sew it here and sew it here so this is what we have for the front and for the back bodies this is what we have so these are the back bodies okay sorry it's like this okay so this is the curve at the back and this is the opening we'll understand how much open it will be once we place it on our front bodies okay so this is one a remember i said the side seam the side has to match because remember we are going to sew it together so this is it right here so you can see how much open our back is going to be from here so now we'll be working with the, now we we'll move to the down part of the dress which is the flare so for the flare we are going to be folding our fabric into two like this so I fold the zip paper into four so this is into two and into four so for the radius I'm going to divide 22 inches which is our waistline by six inches and that's going to give me about 3.5 inches because I want a little gathers around the waistline I'm going to add one inch to that and that will give me four and a half inches so I'm going to measure the four and a half inches round like this I'll measure four and a half inches and then I'm going to connect it like this you can do a better job I'm just doing a rough estimate okay and the full length we're working with is 17 inches minus the half length which is nine inches is going to give me eight inches so that's the length of the first flare remember this is a double flare so i'm going to go by eight inches all around from my radius so eight inches here eight inches here eight inches here and like that and then i'm going to connect it so i have eight inches all around like this then i'll cut it out but before i cut it out let me explain let me quickly explain the second flare this is the longest flare and the first one is about eight inches i'm using eight inches for illustration purpose because this paper is not so long and i don't want to join papers so if you, what you're working with is not eight inches you have to calculate that let's say for example you are working with a full length of 30 inches and the half length you're working with is 10 inches it means 30 minus 10 is going to give you 20 inches so your full length in this case is going to be 20 inches and not 8 inches so we are just doing this for illustration purpose so this is our first flare and the biggest flare so for the second flare the radius remains the same you just need to measure your four and a half inches round like this but in the case of the length i'm just going to go shorter by two or three inches depending on what i want so here if i'm going by two inches i'll just measure six inches round like this and connect for my second flare if i'm going by five inches it means i want it three inches shorter than the long flare so i'll just subtract three inches from it and i'm going to measure five inches round like that i hope you understand that so i'm just going to cut this off now and then take everything to my cutting table and then transfer them to my fabric this is the flare now i've cut it and if you open it up this is what it looks like it's a full flare so i'm just going to slash it open on one side so that i can pass my zipper through it so if we do another flare now it's going to be shorter than this but have the same radius 
so i've replicated this on my fabric for the upper part i'm using a dull face fabric you can see this is the front body this is a sweet hat neckline this is the allowances and i'm basically placing this lace fabric on it just to beautify it okay like this i'm also using the same dull face as lining okay and for the back bodies i've also cut the back you can see the back and the opening and i'll also be placing this lace on it i also cut the lining for the back for the flare i've cut the flare this is the bigger flare you can see it and this is the smaller flare so this right here is a smaller flare you can see it's same radius but just shorter in length and i'll be aiming this flare using this crinoline so i'm just adding the crinoline to just give it small wavy effects because that is what i want so i'm just going to use the crinoline to aim it i'm looking for the opening here okay so i'm just going to sew it on the fabric like this and then use it to turn it over the same way I did in this place then I'm going to sew it like this so I'll just take this to the sewing machine now and sew it so that we can see but before I go let me quickly explain this remember we said we we're putting a loop at the back so this is the back bodies like this so I'm going to be passing loops so this is just a rope that I sew this is about like three quarter inch then you turn it you can also use bias for this so on the back bodies here i'm just going to be sewing my loops like this i remember you have to be consistent so you just take your rope place it here like this and then connect it and then you sew it down but before you start sewing you leave half inch for turning the back body so just leave the half inch and place it here so and then you do the same for the second one like this you sew it down and you do this and you continue depending on the number of loops that you want and also replicate the same on the other side and remember that they have to be on the same spot so it has to be consistent and also the length of the loop you have to measure it and the length between each loops each loops has to be measured also so i just take this to the sewing machine now in order not to waste time and sew it then bring it back to show us so now i've created the loops these are the loops on the back bodies as you can see this is it here i'm still going to cut off this straight i just want us to see it so the next thing is just to place lining on it so that i'll be able to turn it neatly so you can notch the side so that it will assist you on the placement you can see i'm struggling with it okay so once i place a lining on it like this i'm going to sew it and then use my lining to turn it so that i'll have a very perfect finishing so i'll do the same for the other side and for the front i cut just if a very long group five inches long enough to help me reach the back and then tie it across my loop and i'm going to be using that as my sleeve that is what the dress is going to be hanging onto so i just cut the long group and i sew it like this so for neatness i'm also going to turn it with a lining so i'm just going to place the lining on it like this following my sweetheart's curl so by the time i open it up this will also be neatly finished and then once i do that i'm going to shape it on the side then i'll bring it to show so that we can join our flare to it so i've turned the upper part with lining i also turned the back part neatly with lining okay it's just the m line here it's just the waist area now that i'm going to use surgery to just surge it or i cover with bias when i'm done okay so i also sew it on the sides by the one and a half inches i left on both sides so this is the front when i turn it out now so i've turned it here on the, i'm here to iron it because i'm 
I just want to be done with this video so I'm going to bring everything and notch it and iron it I've turned this neatly both front and back I'm just left with the waistline that is still rough which I'm going to serge or turn with bias so that everything can be neat I also saw it on both sides by the one and a half inches that I used when I was drafting okay so the rope has been neatly fixed and concealed when I turn it to the right side now this is the back laced I'm still going to iron all this rope I'm going to iron everything out and this is what the front look like okay so our dress is almost ready the next thing we're going to do now is just to bring in half bring in the flare and join the flare to the main bodies on the waist area now and we are true with our dress so this is the flare remember it's a double flare this is the first one and this is the second one right here you just have different lengths and I remember i told you that the radius remain the same i've sewn the two together so that it will be easier for me to gather so you can see that it all has same radius the difference is just in the length and i've turned both the main uh, the long one and the short one with crinoline if you want me to make a video on how to turn with a crinoline you can drop it in the comment section down below okay so now i'm just going to take it to the sewing machine to just sew this round and then add a little gather because remember when we were drafting we cut this in excess so i'm going to sew this round my waistline now and then i'll bring it back to show us so this is the complete dress kindly subscribe like share subscribe to our channel thanks for watching this video we appreciate your support so far see you in our next class bye